Hey guys, welcome to Take a Pod, and this is the very first episode. I'm your host, Jacob Mzia, and I'm joined by a special guest who's going by the name Tseko Fatso. Tseko Fatso is a female software developer from South Africa. Welcome to, to the show, Tseko. Thank you so much for having me. I'm super excited to be here. <laughs> yeah, it's an honor to have you on the show. Yeah, so first of all, can you just introduce yourself? Like, who would like to know who Tsego Fatso is and how she's coping up as a software developer in South Africa? All right, so as you mentioned, I'm Tsego Fatso Isaac. On social media, I go by the Tsego Fatso and I share content on uh, us being a software developer, running a small business and my personal finance journey. So yeah, I'm 24 years old and I've been working in tech full time for like two years now. So yeah, I'm just sharing my journey on the internet. Yeah, yeah, that's nice. I've I've seen I follow you on YouTube. I've seen several videos, and in one of the videos, you actually interviewed one of the developers whom I have actually used their template in one of my applications. His name is Simo. He's also a software developer oh. from South Africa. <laughs> yeah. <Yes>. So, <laughs> yeah. Could you just walk us through how you got yourself into tech? All right. It's a yeah. bit of a journey. <laughs> it started when I was about 14 years old. So um, I started blogging. I'm just a person that enjoys creating content. So I started blogging. I would share about fashion, how my day went, the most random things. And then yeah. that's when I started noticing, like, my blog kind of looks a bit boring. When I see other people's blogs, they're so cool. That they have, like, all these cool, cool things. And I started wanting to find out how actually that works. So that's when I started learning about HTML and CSS. And I'm like, okay. Okay, this is pretty cool if I type these things I can actually make something look nice and move things to the side and <laughs> do all these cool things so that's when I started learning like web development and I took IT as a subject when I got to grade 10 and yeah so since then I've actually been interested in coding I did IT at school uh, for three years we would code Scratch and Delphi and it was still something I enjoyed throughout those three years so that's why I decided to go study computer science. I studied computer science at the University of Pretoria from 2018 and I graduated at the beginning of 2021 and then since then I've been working full-time as a software engineer so 2021 all the way to 2023 now. Oh, wow. So technically, you started off as a self-taught developer, yeah? Uh, yes, I did, yeah. All right. Bef before knowing about uh, the HTML, was, was there anything that you ever thought of in terms of software development? Or when you were blogging, was it just about blogging in terms of the lifestyle? Did you ever envision that some, at some point you're going to get in tech? Not at that time. Like I was just into, actually at some point I wanted to be like a travel writer. So I was like, you know, writing my blog post, just sharing about my life. So I'm like, okay, this is what I'm going to be doing. <laughs> and yeah. then when I found my HTML, CSS, I actually started, I'm like, oh, maybe I actually want to be a game developer now. Because then I started like watching all the videos, reading blogs about what's this like, you know, coding thing. What can you do with it? So it's only then, like when I started realizing <laughs> all the possibilities, yeah. Yeah, so when you realize that you actually wanted to also try game development, I do you play games, like video games? No, that's the funny thing. And that's one of the reasons I actually didn't end up going that route. Because I'm actually not much of a gamer. So like when I started thinking about it, I'm like, maybe that's not the route for me. <laughs> because like, yeah, so that's why part of the reason. But yeah, I'm not yeah. much of a gamer. I'll play like Candy Crush or Among Us here and there. But yeah, it's only like All once right. in a while. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's great. So what inspired you to get in tech apart from the blog itself? Was it for you to be able to make the blog in the way you want or? Yes, yes. I just wanted to customize some things and um, just figure out how things actually work. But I yeah. guess what kind of inspired me to actually keep going, I guess I really enjoy, I've been during school, I was like strong 
academically so I enjoyed like math and all of that and I'm really someone that enjoys like problem solving so when I started coding I realized okay this is all about solving problems and like one thing about me if I have like a problem or something like I feel like I just need to figure it out like I'll stay like if someone gives me a riddle or some kind of thing it's something yeah. that I just enjoy figuring it out so I think that's a lot of like when you're doing like coding it's like you're solving a problem you're figuring things out so just doing that and yeah during my like uh, high school experience I got to work on some like programs and yeah I really thought that was enjoyable and I just wanted to be able to do a bit more so yeah, yeah. I carried on learning. Ah, all right. Nice. So I know that uh, software development is a male-dominated industry. And in Africa, I know there are several countries that are coming up with big communities in terms of software development. I know Rwanda, Kenya, South Africa as well. How, how would you say your involvement was like in terms of the community? So do you be belong to any development community in your country or maybe you have a female developer community that you're participating in how is the community inv involvement on your side on my side I think I could be more involved in like the community but I think there are some platforms uh, there's like a platform called uh, girl code so it's to empower women uh, to code so uh in 2021 i had the opportunity to get to like give them a talk just to inspire them like okay you know women in tech we can do this and yeah but i've seen uh it's growing and i'm trying to become more involved especially with social media it helps us to like reach people everywhere so i'm slowly but surely trying to kind of be more involved but yeah i think it's it's a growing community yeah so do you have other female friends who are in the software development field or in technology in general? Um, I, Just mostly people that I guess know from social media. As you said, it is a real dominated field. I made a lot of guy friends during school, yeah. you know, the, the numbers are not that balanced, but yeah, now it's yeah. something that I'm actively trying to do and collaborating as well with my platform, on my platform yeah. with like more so that we can you know i guess kind of be seen and show that yeah hey guys we are here we exist <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> yeah that is great because uh i think once in a while we usually come across maybe a female developer in most of the communities in africa but the numbers are very small so if you're going to try to put it to a ratio against the numbers of the male it's going to be a very small fa factor so that's why I was interested in that. I wanted to see if maybe in South Africa, like the way this female developers are, maybe it's a huge number or it's growing. Yeah. So yeah, that is great. All right. So how about content creation? I know that you started off as a blogger in terms of lifestyle and your aim was eventually to be blogging about travel. And I see that you do blog about your lifestyle, maybe hanging out with friends, uh, financial advisors, we'll come, we'll come to that later on. But how did the content creation relate to the technology you? Okay, so I think it all started, as you said, I was just kind of sharing mostly lifestyle content, everything. And then in 2020, I started sharing my personal finance journey and then my channel started to like pick up. So that's when I kind of decided to niche down. I was also in my final year at school. So yeah, I thought the reason I started sharing about like working in tech and so on is because like I would mention it here and there, then I'd get a lot of questions. So I'm like, okay, let me actually start actually sharing more content about this. And uh, I got like a good response, people wanting to hear more asking more questions so yeah that's why I chose I have three niches that I mostly focus mm -hmm. on right now which I mentioned is personal finance um, entrepreneurship and working in tech so yeah I think um, it's just me just sharing my journey and also because I'm also like still I think two years is really like you know new to the journey so it's yeah. also like as I continue to learn more and grow more I'm just continuing just yeah so it's just out there and yeah I guess also like the representation is also I get a uh, like responses from also like a lot of female developers it's like oh, okay no you really inspire me it's good to see you you're there you're working you got through the degree you know so it's like it's possible <laughs> yeah so just yeah. I think 
yeah I, it's evolved a lot over the time but now it's kind of just like I really like to see it as a platform where I'm just sharing my journey my personal experiences but within those niches yeah yeah that is great and on the how long have you been in the content creation field so how long have you been creating content when we I mean, add in the blogs um, I would, it's probably I know on YouTube it's been nine years now and wow. I've been doing it probably like 10 or 11 years I think I started when I was like 13 years old and I'm like 24 now <laughs> so yeah it's been what, a while what got you to start blogging at 13 I, I think it's because I watched a lot of YouTube and then I couldn't afford like data to like um, upload on YouTube so I was trying to find a different way to create content. So that's how I discovered blogging. I'm like, okay, so this, I can, you know, just write something and post it. It's way cheaper than like uploading a whole YouTube video yeah. and all the data. So that's when so I started if, my blog. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So if uploading on YouTube was cheaper then, you would have probably started uh, uploading to YouTube even 13 years ago. Yeah, because I, I, I would oh. like... No, my first video I uploaded, it was 2014. I think it was like around May, April, 2014. It was just like my cousin and I dancing. <laughs> it was just like random. But I'm like, I want the world to see this. <laughs> yeah. You, you, you didn't have a niche yet by then. You were just like, yeah. we're, we're just going to post something. Yeah, yeah. but uh, your, your channel is very uh, effective and it's productive. I've seen you've grown to over 24,000 subscribers, yeah? And I've seen YouTube has sent you some gifts. I saw one video where they sent you a record player. And, yeah. and another one, they sent you the, I think the emblem for shots with an with LED. Yes, right. yes. Yeah, how, do, how does that make you feel as someone who is out there, part of the actual content creators who have made it? Because... If YouTube is recognizing you and sh and sharing gifts with you, I mean you yeah. you've done it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because actually, so last year I was part of the YouTube Black Creator Class of 2022. So it's still like one of my greatest accomplishments right now, just to know like, um, because I, I think sometimes you know when you start your content creation journey, you're just like just sharing, and then now it's like, oh okay, like my work is actually recognized because creating content is actually a whole lot of work so it is really nice you know like just to kind of see that like you're being seen you're being appreciated and yeah no I think YouTube really does good for their creators and yes it, I love it so much <laughs> so yeah no it's really great <laughs> oh yeah nice all right so uh, tell us about your your other stream of videos that you make on your YouTube so I know you have a you have a vlog channel. So that one where you put po you post about your lifestyle and other day-to-day -day activities. But on your main channel, the Tekofat, so it's mostly about tech and financial advice. Yes. I know you you've just started working. I think you've been working for how many years now? Two years now. Yeah, two years. And how did you get to a point where you're confident enough to start sharing? advice on finance i don't like to call it uh financial advice <laughs> it's just uh i'm just sharing for like entertainment and educational purposes so i guess the reason i started sharing is because i actually started learning and trying to empower myself about like personal finance and i realized how much i didn't know but it's like the basics, like, you know, how to start saving for retirement, how to actually budget your salary. So um, it's like these are like very simple concepts that I feel like everyone should know. So I always say like, OK, guys, we're sharing the base. This is the basics. This is what I've learned. You know, go out there and learn more about it. So I, I like to see myself like just that little intro of like, if you want to learn more, you can go out and learn more. But it's things that like... I honestly wish we were taught in like high school or something. It's just like, I think um, being able to handle your finances is so empowering. 
saving and being able to like handle your money and so on so yeah that's why every time I learn something new I'm like okay guys what I've learned this is what I'm trying out and also share when things don't go well as well because I think it's also important I'm not going to lie to people you know just because I, I am still figuring out I always say I'm here figuring it out so I can come back like six months later like oh I tried yeah. this this didn't work out this worked out yeah so as I, I really like to see it as like my personal journey not like uh, financial advice or anything of that sort yeah yeah ah, thank you very much so uh, how about advice in terms of women how what would be your advice to women who are trying to pursue tech maybe they're just beginners or they're considering into jumping into tech maybe from a different career or they're still in school but they want to get in tech any type of tech it might be just uh, content creation digital marketing or software development what would be your advice to them? I would say just like put yourself out there. Like there is space for everyone. Put yourself out there and like your work will be seen. And also if like, for example, you're trying to get in the industry, I'd say like don't get uh, intimidated. It is male dominated. But if you know your stuff, like you deserve to be in that space. Like you're capable of doing the same work. So don't be afraid to like, go out and get things just like yeah try everything and put yourself out there yeah and how would they get started uh, let's say i'm already in another field as a as a woman how would i get started into tech um i'd say like there's a lot of different i guess it's the way you learn best so there's lots of routes to get in to take so kind of just find uh the ones that work for you i'm just gonna recommend some i think they might only be in south africa but there's a uh, girl code the one i mentioned earlier they also have some like internships and empowerment programs and they work with companies and you could actually like get a job right after doing one of their programs so look out for stuff like that as well as we think code it's like a two-year program that also has like uh it starts off with like a super intense boot camp, but then you learn all the work and you also get placed into a job. So there are opportunities uh, opportunities out there. And I think it's that it's about taking that big leap. I think if especially if you're like you're changing careers, it might be scary, but I think if it's something you want, you're gonna need to take that big jump and yeah. So yeah. I think those are the things to think of right now. But I always I'm trying this new thing now on my channel, on my community tab. Whenever I see opportunities, anything, I just like to share them there. Cause I think there's so many different ways to get into tech. Even if it's like you want to go the degree route, that's what I did. Go to school school, study computer science. So just check what could work for you. And yeah, just be on the lookout for all the different programs that are available. Yeah. Yeah. That's nice. Uh, so, so there is this video that I've been meaning to ask you about. There is a video where you you did on, I think you mentioned about work-life balance. So yeah. I know that work-life balance is something that uh, some believe that you can't really have the work-life balance, but you can just get to a point where it's almost there. How do you handle yeah. this? How do you you have the vlogging channel, which shows that you're usually having fun with your friends and then you're having time with your family, and then you have the channel which is showing you writing code uh, at home, and then you're also working during the day. How do you handle that work-life balance for you to have both the productivity in work and also have your own fun? Um, I would say it has to do a lot with planning your time. Like, I am such a planner. I don't just let things just happen, you know? So I think it's just knowing, like, um, and I like to, I don't like to do everything at once. So I like to know, like, okay, eight to five, I'm doing work. And I'd say, like, six to seven, I'm giving a lesson on how to code. So just planning out all the time, making sure that, like, it's important to find the same way you find time uh, to work. It's also important to find time to have fun you know so I also like to believe like we're working so hard so that we can also enjoy life so I think it's yeah. all about making you have to make that time to kind of I know you can't do everything as you mentioned there's no perfect balance but yeah. as much as just remember like okay if I'm working from like Monday to Friday the whole day maybe like three hours on Saturday I'm just gonna go on a hike or something of that sort yeah just making that time and also prioritizing like relaxing and doing fun things outside of work 
Yeah. So you use the calendar a lot. <laughs> yes, I love it. I, love it. I also what? started using Notion yeah. like to plan my month because it's all like makes it like pretty and like <laughs> I can add all the cool features. So I'm trying that yeah. out now. Yeah, I, I plan to try out Notion. I've tried it out once when it just came out, but then I think <laughs> I still haven't utilized it. Yeah. What's your favorite tool in terms of calendar? What what would you use for planning? Honestly, I mostly just use the Google Calendar. <laughs> yeah, that's ah. what I use most. <laughs> just get it. I get the reminders. Also, my um, yeah. I like my Google Calendar and my actual diary. I I know I'm in tech, but I love to write things down. I have like the monthly on the monthly plan. I'll, I'll write out for the yeah. month on the day plan. I'll write out for the day for the week. So I actually really like to because I'll write it down first and then I'll put it in my calendar <laughs> but yeah. yeah yeah i use google calendar a lot as well and i've just realized but that a lot of people don't really utilize the features for the calendars i intend to make a video on that as well so maybe maybe eventually <laughs> the audience would understand yeah. how we can use it yeah so before we close off any future plans that you have in in relation to software development and and content creation yeah in terms of software development um i still see myself as a junior dev i know it's been two years but i guess i'm at a point where i just want to continue learning and growing and like being confident in my skills and yeah and then in terms of my content i'd like to kind of continue growing on my platform recently I started interviewing people in the industry so I'd like to see that platform uh, grow like kind of like me interviewing people with like different like job titles as me because I think I'm always like just sharing my journey but like now it's like let's bring in more people let's share the information yeah. and I'd like to see that grow and I'd also like to like kind of like be out of YouTube more like just being able to like speak maybe at like events and yeah. different things I do enjoy like I'm shy but I do enjoy talking <laughs> so <laughs> yeah I like, share my All story right. share my stories be more involved yeah. also in the and yeah so I just want to keep on growing in those aspects ah oh, all right yeah well it has been fun and you seem that you're a very interesting person you have a lot going on so both in technology the content creation and one thing that we haven't talked about i hope we're going to talk about it in another episode is your candle candle business i i know you have a candle making business yeah <laughs> with a yes, website where you're selling these candles from yeah i think we're yes, going to talk I'm about it <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> Yeah. All right. So before we close off, how would anyone interested to reach out to you or maybe follow your content find you? Like or on what platforms are you actively available? Uh, you can find me on YouTube. It is the Tsukhofato. I'm also on TikTok, Instagram, and Twitter as at the Tsukhofato. No spaces or underscores. <laughs> all right. So all the links to those handles are going to be put in the episode description and if you'd like to talk to Tseko Fatso, reach out to her or follow her content you can click on any of those links and subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow her on all social media platforms. Thank you everyone for listening and thank you very much Sego for joining us in this session. Thank you so much for having me. You're most welcome.